You know when in the evening you try every streaming service you have and you still cannot find something you want to watch. Happens to me all the time. It's even worse when I want something comforting like some historical drama or maybe an adaptation from a book I love. It feels like I've watched everything and what I liked I watched over and over again. But a few years ago I hit jackpot. I discovered Chinese palace dramas. We've seen it all. Charming princes from the East, kidnapping other people's wife and starting ten years wars, gladiators who lost everything, becoming rock stars, killing other people in the arena, medieval wars and roses and dubious adaptations. Let's not talk about Tudors because I'm sure we have enough of those, as we do for Versailles and all about the 19th century. Don't get me wrong, I always welcome a new story or adaptation, but what about something new? What were other people doing in the rest of the world, while people in Europe were wearing huge wigs? So big that a family of mice could comfortably live in it. Not that they did. At least not when someone was wearing the wig. And here comes the beacon of light. A Chinese palace drama. What is it, you ask? It's usually a story that takes place in Beijing, in the Forbidden City, mostly during the Qing era. Why should you watch it? I'll give you five good reasons. Mostly palace dramas star a young woman entering, surprise, surprise, the imperial palace. She enters as a servant or as a concubine, but it doesn't matter. The story is always about her experiences and how she changes during her time in the palace. It's a sort of Bildungsroman, where you see the growth of a character through all the experiences they have, good or bad as they are. And there are a lot of characters, not only the lead. So many plot lines. It's a delight. Never boring. Men are not forgotten, of course, in this sea of women. Especially because, if you think, everybody was there to serve the emperor, the son of heaven in the Forbidden City. But mostly the story is about the ladies. It's also very refreshing, to me at least, to see a very different social system than what we are used to. The emperor had one wife, but as many concubines as he wished. And everybody had to follow a very strict hierarchy, which creates the dynamics of the show. And here we come with the second reason why you should try a palace drama. Politics. Did you enjoy Game of Thrones and all the intrigues and bloody battles? Yes? Here you go, you can watch these women playing the most vile of games while always perfectly dressed and not a hair out of place. It's all about the power. And not only the power of state or government, but individual power. The women and servants couldn't leave the Forbidden City without permission. So all their hopes and future lay between those walls, which I find so fascinating. There is a whole world in there. Of course, with all these moves and counter moves, there is a lot happening, lots of dramas. I mean, you are watching and thinking, oh, finally they can relax and be happy for a while. And no, then tragedy struck and you cannot forget it ever. So many gone. That means, of course, that there are the most deliciously evil villains that you can ever find in a show. You love them while you hate them. Sometimes it's a touch too much to be believable, but who cares? I didn't. To be completely honest though, they go a bit too far sometimes, just a bit. But what happened to me is that it was so bad and so over the top that I actually started enjoying it. My favorite are the medical details. For example, did you know that there is an incense? that if burned every day, all day, it's actually an effective contraceptive. I wonder why no one is using it now. How good were the doctors at the Forbidden City? They could discover someone was pregnant just by touching their wrist, covered by a handkerchief. I wish my doctor was that good. Talking also a bit of a sadder detail, there is a lot of suicide going on, and the most effective way, apparently, is to run head-on towards a wall. I am still baffled. There is also some not very politically correct scenes here and there. But, you know, I accept the whole packet at the end, I guess. 
The reason I kept watching these shows was the drama, the politics and all of this. But what drew me in was the costumes and the setting. I mean, have you seen them? <laughs> amazing and it's so fun to discover all the details that state their status or their mood and the setting i mean i knew the forbidden city was amazing but they did such a good job in recreating all these places if you don't know what to watch an evening or you want something new try a palace drama i know there are so many episodes but it's the same as we watch all our tv series it's just they're broken up in seasons but the amount of episodes is more or less the same. And I know it's also difficult to watch it in Chinese with subtitles. You can do it. My favorite of all of them is the story of Yanxi Palace. I hope I pronounced it right. You can find the sequel on Netflix, but try the original first if you can. The main character, Wei Ying Lu, is such a badass. And there are so many twists that will keep you glued to the screen. You will not regret it. If you enjoyed this very thoughtful suggestion, please click like and subscribe to my new channel. Thank you for listening.